This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we have a pretty exciting tablet. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. It's finally here, announced first in February, and Samsung went back to the drawing board and improved it a lot, and we're going to look at it now. Well, it's finally here, folks. It's August, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 tablet is available in the U.S. as a Wi-Fi-only tablet. It's $499 for the 16 gig and $549 for the 32 gig, and it's available in your choice of uh, deep gray or white. Uh, personally, I would pick the white. It looks kind of nice and appliancey and modern, and the gray one looks a bit more like the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1, which is a little bit duller, a little bit battleship gray, but hey... It's your choice. It's a good looking tablet overall. I'd say uh, yes, it's plastic. Samsung loves their plastics, but they do a nice job of making it look pleasing and pretty sleek. It's 0.35 inches thick, so it's a teeny bit over a third of an inch. Weighs 1.3 pounds, pretty light. You can see you've got this metal looking surround on the edges and the front facing big stereo speakers. Brilliant move there. Uh, Samsung revised their tablets to make them obviously less, look less like the iPad, and in the process they they move the speakers up front, which is, means you can actually hear them. Good thinking. We have the white bezel here since we have the white model, and take a look at the side view. Nice thin tablet. Standard Samsung dock connector. It works with existing Samsung 10-inch tablet chargers, keyboards, the USB host adapter, uh, so you don't have to worry about getting all new stuff if you're already a Samsung customer. Microphone hole there. And here we have the Neato S Pen. This is a active digital pen. This is just not a stylus. This is not a capacitive, imprecise pen. This is an actual Wacom digital pen, and we'll get into that in a moment. Nothing on the side there. Up top is pretty much where you're going to find everything. Here's your power, your volume controls. This is the micro SD card slot compatible with micro SD cards up to 64 gigs in capacity. And here's your IR blaster window because this has the TV AV gear remote control app called Peel on board, which we've seen in some other Samsung tablets. That's a pretty neat thing to have. And there's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Nothing on that side either. And the back is glorious shiny white. Not bad looking though. And then this part here is obviously more silvery and there's your 5 megapixel camera, your LED flash, and the front has a 1.9 megapixel camera just like the Samsung Galaxy S3. The unit is sealed together. This is not designed to open up easily to access the battery or anything inside, which is the same as pretty much every other Android tablet and the iPad in that respect. The tablet has a 10.1 inch 1280 by 800 display. Now some reviewers gave uh, Samsung a hard time for not making this a 1920 by 1200 display, but you know, I think they really had enough work cut out for them doing the active digitizer with pen support right there. And they're also trying to keep the price affordable, so I have no problems with that. It's one of Samsung's PLS displays. It's their answer to IPS. Very nice, lots of color. You know Samsung, they have very good color saturation. There's a couple of color saturation options, in fact. And very sharp looking, so I'm really not complaining. I've enjoyed watching movies on this, browsing the web, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going, oh man, give me my Transformer Infinity TF700 back. This looks nasty. Not, not at all. And for those of you, well, this is a case of is the pen mightier than, mightier than the keyboard. For those of you who really feel that there's a great use for the pen here, it's it's certainly worth not having that Mondo HD resolution display there. Now, for those of you who really like the keyboard, obviously the Transformer Infinity TF700 and the TF300 as well with their optional keyboard dock are going to appeal to you more, so it's really a case of which you want. But anyway, Samsung's accessory keyboard docks work with this. You can use Bluetooth keyboard, so for those of you who do like to have keyboards as well, unless you're looking for that clamshell form factor that turns it into a notebook looking device, you, you've got options here for the typing style input. And of course you have on-screen keyboards and we'll show you that too. This runs Android OS 4.04 4 Ice Cream Sandwich. I'm sure it's going to get jelly bean. God knows when though because Samsung is usually not super duper fast about getting updates out. It runs on a 1.4 GHz quad-core Samsung Exynos CPU. That's pretty exciting. The Galaxy S3 overseas had that, but we never got to have the pleasure of trying out that fast CPU here. So it is indeed a very fast performer. It scored 53.49 on Quadrant, which is so far the highest score we have seen from an Android tablet. Good going, Samsung. 
Uh, GL Benchmark would not run on this. I don't think it understands the Mali 400 GPU quite just so well yet, but so far I can tell you 3D gaming, absolutely awesome, works well. On Tutu, scored a very impressive 12,777. So you're looking at a very fast tablet here for the money. It, it, it's certainly holding its own against the Tegra 3. No problems there. Tablet has a 7,000 milliamp battery, and we're still running our battery tests on this, but so far it looks like you can get through about six hours of video playback and probably two days to three days of moderate use just doing everyday kind of stuff with it, not sitting there glued to videos the whole time. As I mentioned, you can get this with either 16 or 32 gigs of internal storage, and in either case, you can use a micro SD card to expand your storage for data, movies, documents, whatever you want to put on there, and it has 2 gigs of RAM. It has Bluetooth 4.0, dual band, Wi Fi, 802.11 BGN. There is no 3G in this model, this is the Wi Fi only version for the US. The overseas version, if you want to import it, for about oh, $150 more, you can get one with a SIM card slot that does HSPA. Will a carrier pick this up? Who knows, they just might. Tablet also has a GPS with GLONASS support, and yes, it works, and it works even if Wi-Fi is not turned on. No problems with that. And it runs Samsung TouchWiz software. No surprise there, on top of Android. If you're a Samsung person and you enjoy it, you'll probably be just thrilled about that. If you like clean Android, you'll probably be less thrilled. Uh, it, they customize the icons some. They, they do some nice stuff, actually, here. Like, you can see all the quick and large actions you can do to control your wireless radios, look at the time, control your media playback, control your brightness. Uh, so I have no complaints there. You get a lot of Samsung apps on here and you can see by default we get the weather widget, sure, but we also get Samsung Media Hub, Samsung Music Hub, Samsung Game Hub, and you don't have to have these up here. You can press and hold and drag them off and put whatever, whatever widgets you want up there, but Samsung is trying to uh, get, get a lot of media presence going there to try to compete with iTunes, no doubt, but there's also the Google Play Store on board, and for your books, there's Nook, there's Kindle. In fact, Nook is preloaded on this. All sorts of other options if you're not into the Samsung stuff. You get your usual multiple home screens here. Nothing too different going on. If you notice this little eye over here, that's because just like the Galaxy S3, it has a neat little feature called Smart Stay. So if you're looking at the tablet and it sees you, assuming there's enough light in the room, then it won't turn the screen off if you're staring at the screen, which is kind of nice. You're reading a book, you're taking a little long to read that page, and it's really annoying when it just turns itself off, so that will take care of that. It also has some of the social networking stuff that's on the Galaxy S3. If you take a picture of somebody, it'll ask you to identify them, and it'll try to group pictures together uh, relating to who they are in your contact list. Lots of other neat Samsung stuff here. I actually really like what they do with customizing the applications, and uh, the software hasn't gone overboard here yet like it sometimes does on the Galaxy S3. For example, we've got S Planner here. Now this is like right, the most cool calendar we've ever seen. It looks a lot better than your drab old basic Google Calendar. All sorts of stuff on here. Many views. They have their own video player and their own music player as well. We'll show you the music player. It's pretty nice. So here you've got it. You can have your Album art over here, not that that's too exciting because this is a sample track from Samsung. But this is designed to show you the stereo separation in the speakers. Good sounding speakers, not incredibly loud, but certainly adequate enough as you can hear to watch a movie on Netflix or the uh, video service of your choice and hear it pretty well. And here we've got the usual grouped by interesting things like years, genre, folders, songs, playlists, all that kind of stuff. And you have regular Google Play Music on here as well. Samsung also has their own app store. Uh, I don't know about you, but all these different app stores are making me a little bit crazy. But the handy thing is that they have some stuff that's optimized for the S Pen, and they do have a section just for the S apps, so it can make it easy. And occasionally they give, they give away some stuff that normally you would have to pay money for. It's another option there, and you can create a Samsung account for free, and then Download anything that's free to your heart's content without paying a dime, or you can buy stuff if you wish to as well. Obviously, the Google Play Store is here, too. Other apps include Samsung's chat-on application, so you can kind of do a threaded text messaging without having a text messaging service. That's kind of handy. We've got their all-shared DLNA. My Files, which is their, their browser for your files, and works pretty well with the SD card and with USB external flash drives. We have textbooks here. Now, 
those of you who are familiar with digital text textbooks might actually know more about what this means, but you can see that we've got some sample stuff right here. And say we want to like actually do some writing on here. We're going to whip out the S Pen and also watch this cool trick as we whip out our S Pen. Hear the sound effect? And it pops out all of your pen-centric applications. Now you can actually tell it to actually launch just one application. Say you want S Note every time, or Polaris Office, or whatever it is, but that's kind of a neat thing. So it has a sensor for the pen, and in fact, it uses that sensor intelligently. It, if you take the, the pen out of the silo, it knows it, and the active digitizer does consume a bit more power, so there's an option to tell it, well, whatever the pen's in the silo, turn off the active digitizer that works with the pen to save some power. Good stuff there. Anyway, we've got our little pen out, and we're going to stick with the default right there, and we're going to just make our own little notes. So if you have a textbook, obviously very, very useful. You can do things like make notes on the textbook. And if you make a terrible error, you can erase. And notice it is not erasing anything but the stuff that you draw, so you won't ever efface your textbook. The included pen is actually a pretty good size and weight. We're thrilled that there's actually a silo, not to mention an intelligent silo, that does handy things that we told you about here. But this is a good enough size to be comfortable to write with and to draw with. It has a single button here, often can work as a race, and you can use it for things like screen capture and all that as well. And we're going to show you something pretty neat here. This is the side-by-side -side function. I already have this set up. I've got my web browser running over here, and I've got S Note over here. Now you can set up side-by-side -side so it launches S Note, Polaris Office, the gallery application, email, or video player if you would like to actually play a little hooky and watch videos while you're doing something else. But I've got S Note open right here, and you can see that. Uh, As I pan around my document, I actually just grabbed this picture from this story over here, and then I made my little note to self saying, interesting story. And then we've got clipboards here, so you can actually copy more stuff from here. You can copy the URL and put it over here as well. So as I said, I've already copied a couple of things off of here, and if I want to access it, you just be in keyboard mode, bring up the keyboard. There's your on-screen keyboard, and then you see here's my access to my clipboard. And here's all the stuff that I've been taking off of here, including the URL that I copied. So say, I thought it was an interesting story. Well, of course, I want to have that URL. Throws it right in there. So obviously, this can be incredibly re useful. You're doing research on the web, and you can bring over the content you've got over here. Put Type or handwrite whatever you want over there. And given the fact that Android doesn't generally do side-by-side -side screens, it's a nice job that Samsung did of actually making that possible with several applications. Now let's take a look to see if we want to go, just go single view there. Here we are in S Note full screen view, and it has other features like, well, obviously simple things like the eraser, you can make a voice recording, you can throw in a picture from the camera, clip art, maps, also maps, very useful there, isn't it? Uh, draw shapes, and it has a shape straightener, so if you can't draw a good circle to save your life, this will help you with that. Ink of all kinds, so you can draw and paint, and this with the equation symbol is the thing we're going to show you right now. If you press and hold on that, you're going to get a choice between writing an equation, using the shape drawer that's going to automatically tidy up your shapes, or doing handwriting recognition. So now we'll try out the handwriting, and uh, don't write a word at a time, because what it does is it glues them all together, write out a natural sentence, and it actually figures out where to put the spaces. And by the way, there is no delayed recognition, like you'll have on Windows tablets, where you can write something, circle it, and have it write afterwards. So you just got to go for broke here. And you can see it has palm rejection, because my hand is resting on here. And pretty close, not too bad. I'm writing at a slightly weird angle right now, obviously left-handed besides. Generally speaking, it does a pretty good job, and I'm writing at a fairly natural size. I didn't have to write absolutely huge letters, and, and as I said, you don't want to write one letter at a time or one word at a time. You do want to write naturally. And the fast CPU makes a difference. Compared to the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note phone, this guy is certainly a lot quicker with the hand recognition. I think it helps with the accuracy as well. And if you want to do things like drawing, here's a simple little drawing I did. and Just tap over here to bring up your tools. Put it in edit mode by doing that, so you can pan around until you put it in edit mode. And we'll draw a 
big evil kitty cat over here keeping an eye on the bird. So it's responsive ink and it is pressure sensitive. You can see light line, heavy line. And you can choose various tools over here for drawing and painting. Pretty good stuff right there. And say I want to fill in my cat and make him orange. And now I've got a big fat fill tool and I'm making my strange orange cat. So when you're in an application like S-Node, the built-in applications, they do tend to support palm rejection, which is great. So you're not vectoring with your hand. A lot of apps do support pressure sensitivity. They may not support palm rejection. For example, Sketchbook Pro. Alias Sketchbook Pro is an excellent drawing application. We'll show you right now. And there is no palm rejection, but it does pressure sensitivity beautifully. Here we are in Sketchbook Pro, and they just give you a nice open field to draw with. And if I press a little harder, I get a darker line. So there's a light line. There's a very heavy line. Now if my hand's on here, see it just vectored. So that's the annoying thing about that. Sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. Generally if you lay your palm down first, and it already figures out what's going on, but it'll still sometimes vector. But if it were not for the vector problem, this would be absolutely and completely awesome. As it is, you're really going to have to keep your hand on the bezel. And we turn on the pressure sensitivity option in settings, for those of you who are wondering. And only the Pro version supports pressure sensitivity with the pen. You can see there's that option right there. So that's Alias Sketchbook Pro. And the tablet also comes with Photoshop Touch, which is usually a, it's a $10 application if you want to buy it yourself, so that's nice. Now, you don't really have to have a pen with Photoshop Touch, but it does support the pressure sensitivity of the pen, and it also has palm rejection. So we're going to take a look at it. Here we've got our pen going, and you can set the size and opacity of it, and we're making an absolute mess of this painting, but big heavy stroke versus a light stroke. Not too much going on with the pressure sensitivity there, but complete palm rejection. I'm resting my hand on the screen, and we have no vectoring whatsoever. So for those of you who are graphic artist types, and you'd rather not use your finger to do touching up, you got the S-Pen here. And also for those who are into the pen and maybe have tried other pen-based Android tablets, of which there are, of course, very few. There's the HTC Jetstream, the HTC Flyer, and the Lenovo ThinkPad tablet. The application Sketch works just fine. Evernote's not enhanced like it is on HTC tablets, so you don't do drawing directly in your Evernote notes, but you can use Sketch and attach those to your Evernote notes. And there are, there are actually a small number of very good applications for writing. This one right here, AnyNote. HD, this is actually available for free on the Samsung app marketplace, and you get this kind of notebook thing going on here. You can erase, you can write. It works very nicely, and this can actually save as image or save as PDF. So some of the note-taking applications, well, they're real nice, but there's no way to get them off the device. With this application, you can. And now we have our tablet laying on its back using the compass stand, because I know you folks are always wondering about the stands, and this one holds it either upright or kind of flat on its back. And we have to do that because you can see I have Samsung's $20 USB adapter. It plugs into the port on the bottom, the docking port, and then you can plug in USB peripherals. That means flash drives, game controllers, uh, whatever Android supports. That does not mean 3G dongles, though. Sorry, folks. Also, Samsung supports FAT32, so that means flash drives are good. But for hard drives, it does FAT32, not NTFS, so keep that in mind. Anyway, why do we have this Logitech game controller attached? Because we're going to check out Grand Theft Auto. Alright, so we're about to start our reckless driving endeavor. Again, using this controller right here.
Secret dramas you play live? Yeah, it plays just fine. Certainly should. This is a very, very powerful tablet. No problems whatsoever, other than with my driving skills today. And now just to show you more USB stuff, we've got a flash drive here. Going to plug it into our little adapter. And we're going to check out my files, and we'll see our USB drive right there, and it shows me all my storage items right there. So I've got a photograph there. Looks good. And let's check out a PDF. And we're going to use Adobe Reader. As you can see, Adobe has annotation capabilities handy if you've got the pen right here. So we can mark up our PDF to our heart's content. We can sign contracts, all that kind of stuff with the PDF viewer. Nice. And we've also got an HD movie trailer, 1080p, on the flash drive, so let's see how it plays off of that. My dear Frodo. Plays perfectly well. Nice screen, very nice video playback. Supports all the usual formats that Android does, MPEG-4, H.264, and also supports DivX. Very pleasing for videos, especially with the good speakers facing forward at us. And as I mentioned, it does Netflix too. Other things we like about the tablet, it has that Peel AV remote to control your home theater gear with the IR Blaster. Kind of a neat feature there. Samsung's customized applications, the S Planner, their music player, the video player. They have a lot of nice apps that they put on here that, that makes TouchWiz worthwhile. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 Android tablet available now in the U.S. for $499 for the 16 gig, $549 for the 32 gig, and your choice of gray or white. It's thin, it's good looking, it's light, and honestly, I can easily recommend this. I, I'm not so bothered that it doesn't have an HD display that is a 1920 by 1200 display. It's a very pleasing display, very wide viewing angles, nice colors, sharp looking, and for those of you who have a use for the pen and, and you know who you are, well, if you're a graphic artist, if you take notes in meetings, if you like that side-by-side -side functionality, if you want to sign contracts, mark up documents, this is really invaluable and is fairly well done here. Thanks to the Wacom Digitizer with pressure sensitivity, certainly it's a step ahead of the Lenovo ThinkPad Android tablet, which was a decent product in its day, but now it's pretty dated, just runs on the Tegra 2. And Samsung has taken to the next level with their applications here, including with the handwriting recognition in the S-Note app. I also applaud Samsung for doing something very different from Apple and the iPad. The pen is really something that sets it apart from most tablets on the market, and certainly from the iPad, and those of you who've tried the capacitive styluses on the uh, iPad know what I'm talking about. I'm really not very precise. You're certainly not going to be the next Picasso using a capacitive stylus. And of course you have all the other benefits of Android like removable storage, USB host, um, so good good job there. It's also one of the fastest tablets on the market with the quad-core Exynos, 2 gigs of RAM inside, so top-notch specs all around. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to visit our website for the full review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.